reading. Let's begin. Page 354. Page 354. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 354. Man of sorrows, On the second, fair in shame and scoff and rude, in my place condemned to stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior, guilty, vile, and helpless, weak, spot. Fourth, lifted up was he to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in hell, exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. On the last, when he comes, our glorious King, all his ransom. y'all have a nap? Did you overeat? So if you had a nap, might help, might not. How many of you had too much? How many of you didn't have enough? Okay. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we gather this evening like we always do. The world got excited about today because it meant a lot of things to some people. It meant lots of food, getting together. They're looking forward to tomorrow. Father, for us, it's another exciting day. When you said, this is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. That's how we want to view this. We don't want to get caught up in a ceremony or a ceremonial uh, belief that, oh, yes, we believe this or that. No, Lord, we believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that, that directs and steers our lives. So today as we gather, tonight as we're here, we're excited that that's true, and it'll be true tomorrow. And we want it to control our lives. We don't just want it to be Sunday's past, now it's Monday. We want Monday to be as exciting and special and spiritual as today. So tomorrow, if you tarry, and we have tomorrow, I pray, God, that we'll worship you just as hard, if not harder, than we did today. We want it to be that, that special, that powerful. We're praying for that, Lord. Thank you that we can be here. Thank you, Lord, that we know you love us. We know that you're coming back. If you don't, we'll still be with you, but we look forward. You said that, uh, Paul said, there's a crowd for those who love his appearing, and we would really love to see you show up, but we know you have a time frame, you have a timetable, and may we be busy and diligent uh, doing what you want us to do until you come. Thank you for this night. We pray this. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 96 in your hymnals, He Was Wounded for Our Transgressions. Page 96.
Ushers, will you come? We're going to do the offering and get you going so you can go home and eat leftovers. I'm sorry. He's risen and the flowers are open. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming and dying, paying for our sin. I pray that we'll realize as best we can what all that means while we were yet sinners. I, I just still wonder why you would love me. That doesn't make any sense. There's nothing lovable about me or any of us, but you came and died. You didn't just say, I love you. You died for us. It says it, we know it, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That should be all the incentive that we need. When Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth me, we get what he means. We may not live that like we should, but, but we get it. And I pray it will get us tonight. I mean, really grab a hold of us so that we live hard and strong and all out for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you eat enough this afternoon? Did you have a nap? Page 358. He lives on high. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 358. Christ the Savior came from heaven's glory to redeem the lost from sin and shame. On his brow he wore the thorn crown. seated. Rainy and I are going to sing a duet. Amen. I saw one hanging on a tree
but you go well together. <laughs> Luke 24, I wanted to preach this this morning, and uh, I, it's kind of Easter-y, resurrection-y, but that's okay, that's okay. Luke 24, it's a great passage of Scripture. I love th this passage of Scripture. It's been a tremendous challenge to my life. Luke 24, Luke 24, I... I I just call it, but we trusted. And that but we trusted means sometimes it doesn't turn out like we trusted. But we trusted. We wanted to see something else happen. Do you ever pray about something and you're, it wasn't answered the way you want it to be answered? Can I get a witness? Do you ever pray about something and God just, it was like he didn't answer? That's an answer. Did you ever pray about something and God gave you exactly what you wanted? Not very often. Right? Admit it. Not very often. God, because God knows better. And sometimes we have this, you know, hey, you know what I really need, God. You, God doesn't want advice. He just wants to be trusted. God, I don't know what I need. Here's what I like, but I believe that you know exactly what I need. Luke 24, Jesus has died. He's risen from the dead. It, 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 it just troubles me. He kept telling everyone, they all knew, anybody around him, he kept telling them that he was going to rise from the dead. There shouldn't have been any question. If, if they saw him raise up someone else, they shouldn't have said, wow, you really think that can happen? All the miracles they saw, was there any doubt of what he could do? There shouldn't have been, right? How could they go from miracle to boat to mess? Shouldn't have they have said, we just went through a miracle, we're in this boat, we're in a mess, but we believe he's got another miracle in his back pocket. And that's how we ought to be living. We shouldn't go from miracle to mess uh-oh, we should go for a miracle if we're in a mess. He can, he can perform another miracle if he needs to. I, I think one of the things that's hurt Christianity is that a lot of us, and I'll say us, because we don't want anybody offended in this room. If I start pointing at you and saying you. and So I, I think there's a lot of us that live the Christian life defeated. We're living it. We're, you know, How's it going? Man, not too good. So I think that kind of, people smell that. They can smell that we're not victorious. We sing it. Man, we're, we're, we're hey, maybe, maybe, and often we're not 
giving them what Christ can really do for us because we don't have it. Do you understand? We're, 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 you know this story, don't you? Verse 13. It says, Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Now here's, here's where you're going to be tempted. What well, my Bible says, don't worry about how far it was. Okay? Some things are worth studying. You say, well, God put it in there. And he wants us to know. But that, that distract. So some of you are going to be checking your study Bible. You're going to be looking on your phone. I, I, I wonder how far that is. I'm not going to tell you because it's not important. So now you know how far it is. Does that make you a better Christian? Not usually. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying don't, don't, don't get sidetracked by things. Verse 14, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. Think of what happened. All the things that happened, not just that they crucified the Son of God. Remember when he was on the cross. All the things that happened. Remember the, the, the graves opening? People coming out of their graves. The, the sun, it went dark. I mean, you'd kind of talk about that stuff, wouldn't you? They sealed his tomb. Why are they? Why He's dead. We don't have to worry. Why are we sealing his tomb? Because he said he's going to rise from the dead. Well, obviously, if they felt they needed to seal his tomb, they thought someone was going to steal the body. Or, I mean, how? I'm sorry. How dumb can you get? If you're going to rise from the dead, you're not going to go, boy, I'm awake now. Now i got to get this stone out of the way. If, if you have the power to come back to life, the stone is not your biggest problem. But that's how the world thinks. That's how lost people think. So all those things that went on, now all of a sudden, they're discussing them. We discuss the Bible too much when we ought to just be trusting what the Bible says. Why would Jesus, why, why would Jesus save you? Because he wanted to. Why would he want to? I have no idea. You can spend your whole life Wrapped up. We're just supposed to enjoy it. Does he love you? The Bible says he does. Did he die for you? Died for every sinner. If you're a sinner, he died for you. Can you go to heaven if you trust him? Live like that. If our biggest problem has been taken care of, there's no reason we should be sad. We shouldn't be defeated. We shouldn't be discouraged. So they're discussing. God didn't write the Bible and say, hey, I'm going to write a Bible. You all discuss what you think it means. He didn't write it. The, the, the Bible isn't open for discussion. He wants us to believe it. Did he tell his disciples he was going to rise from the dead? Then they should have said, this is a done deal. They left him when he died. Now they're not focusing on what he said. This is very important for where we're going. They did not focus on what he said. They focused on what they saw. Did you ever see something and it scared you? It, it distracts you from believing. It happened to Elijah. Isn't that a great story? Elijah calls down fire from heaven. The fire that came from heaven ate water. Did you hear me? Ate water. Ate rocks. And Jezebel said, you know, I don't like what you've done. You've killed, you've gotten rid of all the evil, so I'm going to get rid of you. I mean, again, we discussed this. Wouldn't you knock on her door and say, here I am? I mean, if God can, can send fire that eats up water. He quit looking at what God.
God said, and he started looking at what he could see. And you can't live the Christian life like that. Hebrews 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you start looking at what you think and discussing what you think, and why wouldn't the Lord come back by now and can't believe that he'd let this go on, we are not going through anything like they went through in the scriptures. Have you read Hebrews chapter 11 lately? We're not going through anything like they've gone through. We think, man, it is bad. It could get worse. It came to pass, verse 15 says, while they communed together and reasoned. Jesus does have a sense of humor. Huh? This is why I believe in cloning. Because if God will let me be cloned, I'm coming to your house. I'm going to be your house guest. I mean, I'm hoping there's a way you don't know it, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to listen and watch. Don't you love this story? Jesus himself drew near and went with them. They're discussing him. Obviously, they think he's dead. Obviously, there's no point. It's over. We're defeated. We're discouraged. He said, you're sad. They were sad. Verse 16 says, but their eyes were held that they should not know him. Isn't that fun? I mean, come on. Well, this is more, come on. This is a theological thing. This is theological nothing. He's there to give them a hard time. Right? Remember what he called them? Fools. See, they're discouraged. He should have talked nicer to them. You tell them that when you get to heaven. You sit down and discuss that. And you, you don't agree with what he said. Verse 17, and he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And I'm thinking the walking there just isn't walking. I'm thinking the walking there is he took it as that was what they were resigned to. It wasn't like, man, oh boy, what the world happened? It's kind of like they accepted everything that happened because that's what they saw. And I think that's why he's saying that here. I think that's why Luke's interjecting that. Jesus said... What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Like all of a sudden, is this how you're going? What he said, I think. Is this how you're going to live now? We, we're not enjoying the Lord like we should. And it's only because we're looking at what we're saying and we don't like it. We have to trust what he said. When he died and the disciples weren't there, somebody should have spoke up and said, hey, remember what he said? He said he's going to rise from the dead. R remember he said that? They, they should have talked to each other. What did they do? The Bible says they hid in a room for fear of the Jews. Were they in some tight spots where he got them out of that? Were they about to die in a boat, but he, he rescued them? Were they not all there when Peter sank? He reached down and picked Peter up. Now all of a sudden the, the world is, is coming to an end. But here's two. And so he says, I, I just noticed that, that you're sad. They didn't say, who are you? Where'd you come from? Verse 18 says, one of them whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? I don't know how often they crucified people, but it was common. 
I don't know why anybody would want to watch that. Why would you want to stand there and watch a guy hanging on a cross, suffocating to death? Well, because he deserved it. You think what you want. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I mean, I'm more of a Batman guy. When they swing six feet from the other person and you know they didn't hit them, and then this big word says pow, I can live with that. I can't live with that, though, when they shoot guns and, and their chest explodes and blood squirts everywhere, say it isn't real. Yeah, it looks real. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to think like that. God hates death. The wages of sin is death. God hates death. And we, we portrayed it to the point where it isn't that bad. It isn't real. Then don't make it look real. I mean, now they're doing it with video games, right? Shooting and kicking and cutting each other and blood flirts over, all over the screen. No thanks. God and sickos are, are watching these people die. Lots of people did. When we were in the Holy Land, they had these giant coliseums. That's where they would persecute the Christians. They would send the lions in and people. That was their entertainment. Say, because they didn't have TV. If they had TV, it would have been on TV. We, we've come a long way. We feed on stuff we shouldn't feed on. And I'm not talking just about evil stuff. I'm talking about like this. They said, how can you be around here and not realize what's happened? I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Christ was crucified and now it's come out that, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, one of the, one of the thieves said, we deserve this. He didn't deserve this. So all those people watching heard that and they're thinking, yeah, man, what, why was he crucified? The authority said, don't worry about it. No, we're worried about it. Because if you crucify him for nothing, you're going to crucify one of us for nothing. Why did you seal the tomb? Because he said that he'd rise from the dead. We want to make sure nobody steals his body. Then others said, you know what, I was, I was at dinner one time with him. And there was no food, but he made food out of a bag. I was at a funeral one time. And he came to the casket. And the person in the casket, he, bought him, he brought him back to life. We're going to hang out by the tomb. Because he might come back to life. But not these two. They said, what's the use? What's the point? Verse 19. Notice what he says. I, I, does Jesus know everything? In fact, let me ask you a hard question. Was he at his crucifixion? Was he at his resurrection? So when they said, don't you know the things? Look at verse 19. Thank God for his sense of humor. He says, verse 19, what thing? Say, he's lying. I guess he is. Because he knew. But he didn't say, I don't know. He said, tell me what things you're talking about. It's like confessing sin. When you sin, does he know that you've committed it? He wants you to confess it. When you come and go, I, I said a bad word. He doesn't go, you did, I missed that one. When you come to him and say, I said a bad word. He goes, I know. What do you think of that? I think it's terrible. I think that's what crucified you. And he says, that's exactly right. Do you understand? Are you with me? He wants to hear their confession. He says in verse 19, what things they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. That sounds good. But did they believe it? 
If they believed it, they wouldn't be saved. And how the, verse 20, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Notice where it stops. Notice verse 20. They've crucified him. Stop. Verse 21. But we trust him. Aren't you glad that you and I know? I haven't seen him, but I know that he's raised from the dead. I, I know it. I I trust God's word. You say, what if you die and you're stuck in the ground and none of this is true? I've still had a good life. I mean, he's blessed me. He's given me peace. Talk to people. Look at people. Witness to people. They are so unpeaceful. They have nothing. They said, he's dead that's not what we wanted, but we trusted. That's not how this is supposed to work. We don't like this, verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. That, that doesn't have anything to do with it. If they read the scriptures, he came into his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We trusted that it had been he, verse 21, which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today's the third day since these things were done. What did they expect? You see, they knew enough, but they weren't following through on all of it. Can I just talk to you as a friend? You'll never know enough. You'll always have to trust him. Well, you know what I think. You know, you, no, it doesn't matter what you think. What does he say? We we get into this. Well, you know, I'm you know I'm a I've studied the Bible. I've studied the Bible. I still struggle with it. I still don't know what he means. I still have to trust. He's never going to make it where you don't have to trust him. I mean, God's got this worked out. He doesn't say, you don't, you don't achieve anything. Paul said, I'm the least of all the saints. I thought he's a pretty good Christian. Then he turns around and says that. He said he's the chief of all sinners. Really? That's how you grow. You only grow by knowing that you're not grown. If you think you've grown, you won't grow. Get it? You, I, I know it's Sunday night. Man, that, that, is, that is mental wrestling. I know. Verse 22 says, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them, verse 24, which were with us went to the sepulcher. And found it even so as the women had said. But him, look at this, him they saw not. Have you ever seen him? You will. Have you ever seen him? See, you can get so caught up in what you think you need to see that you won't trust him. But we trusted. No, you didn't. You, you, didn't you, you didn't trust him. You trusted what you think he should do. As soon as they say, look at this, watch this now. Watch the progression. As soon as they say in verse 24, we didn't see him. What does he say? What's verse 25 say? Then he said unto them, what? Oh, fools. Ouch. Man, that's rough. That, that's rough talk, isn't it? 
That's street language. He doesn't say, oh, dear, weak Christians. That's what I would have said. They said, you know, we thought that, that we'd see him, that this was true, and he said it was true, but we didn't see him. Verse 25 is almost like our Lord has had it. I've listened to you dribble on. Isn't it great? They're, they're, they're sad. Do you get this? They're sad because they think he's dead. Where is he? Right with them. I mean, I think fools is light. I think he should have kicked them. I think he should have said, bend over. Kick them. They, they, he's right there. I mean, wouldn't you feel foolish after he says, hello? <coughs> it's me. You said you wanted to see me. Here I is. Right here, you're missing me. So, well, their eyes were, were held. Yeah, because they didn't believe. They didn't want to believe. They wanted it on their terms. Verse 25, oh, fools and slow of heart. Where do you believe? In your heart. We confess with our mouth, we believe in our heart. For with the for with the heart, Romans 10.10 10 says, for with the heart man believeth under righteousness. It's all mine for them. We don't get it. We don't get it. You know why a lot of smart people aren't Christians? Because they don't get it mentally. Why did, why did Jesus go to the down and out and the sinners? Because man... They, they, didn't, they didn't care. They didn't want to get it. They just knew they needed to change. Do you know anybody like that? We say too smart for their own good. We say too earthly minded to be, any, uh, to, to be heavenly good. I mean, you know someone that they, they don't have common sense, but they're, they're very smart? That, that's a problem. Because they're trying to analyze what happened. You can be the smartest guy on earth, but you'll never be as smart as God. So quit trying. Just believe. What does he say? Verse 25, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. See what he's saying there? You had what you needed. Hey, look, I need you to look up here. You have what you need. Having a hard time. You have what you need. I don't understand why God would do. You have what you need. I'm asking God for direction because I want to do. You have what you need. It's complete. Everything's there to make it easy for you to know exactly what he wants and what he says and what you need to do. And so he says that. He says, oh, fools. Fools meaning what? You're atheist. Right? You're, a you're acting like you don't believe in God. The fool has said in his heart what? There is no God. You're acting like there is no God. Remember when he said that to the disciples? How is it that you have no faith? Isn't that us? Oh, fools and slow of heart. Man, that, that's dead on. That is dead on. It's not talking about feelings. You don't feel me. It's talking about believing in your heart. Just read it and go, you know what? God said it. it that's all I need. It doesn't make sense up here, but he said it. Man, I'm going to get it in me right there. That's all I got saved. Man, I didn't know where any of the books of the Bible were. 
Here I am, paging through this Bible, reading, but once I read these scriptures, you talk about something being alive. For years I was told, you get sprinkled as a baby, you make your first Holy Communion, you make your confirmation, you come to Mass, you take communion, say, you know, you're saying things that are giving away what you were. I know that. They told me if you do all these things, you have, I can remember the, the priest called me in. He said, I'm concerned about you. I was in the eighth grade. My mom and dad divorced. And I was having a hard, hard year. And he called me in and he said, hey, I'm really concerned about you. And I said, why? He said, it's just, you know, how you doing? Seems like you're having a hard time. I said, I am. I said, my dad walks in one day and, and leaves. And my mom's boyfriend moves in the same day. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. He looked at me. He said, you're not thinking about suicide, are you? I said, I wasn't until now. He goes, well, you know, he gave me no hope. Well, you know what? You're a Catholic. You just keep practicing what you know to practice. Let me tell you something. I practiced that for several years. It didn't work. Say, you know you're saying that out loud. Oh, was I? Let me say it again. They had no, the Catholic Church had absolutely no hope for me. Say, there's some of them out there going to be offended. It's time to get offended. It's time to storm your priest and tell him to bend over. Hey, you, you kept the truth from me. That same priest I saw years later in a wedding. He said, how you doing? I said, man, I got born again. I, I wasn't trying to be spiritual. I wasn't sure what I was saying. I didn't say I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I said, I got born again. He goes, what? I go, I, I asked Jesus to save me. I know I'm going to heaven because I'm born again. Oh, you blankety blank. What the blankety blank? You're, you were, you were, he, his word. You were baptized as a Catholic. You, you're not, forget that stuff, you blankety blank. Amy was with me. If you don't believe that story, ask her. My hope is here. When my cousin Vic got saved. He took his Bible to the priest. He threw it in front of him. He opened to Romans. He said, see these verses? Yeah. How come you never showed me these verses? They're not in our cycle. He said, well, they should be because my cousin came and showed me how to go to heaven, and these verses are getting me to heaven. They probably ought to be in your cycle. And the priest said, well, no, I don't make up the cycle. And he said, well, you ought to put them in the cycle. And he said, well, I can't do that. He picked up his Bible. He said, I'll never be back here again. Not the priest, my cousin. <laughs> Say, you know, you're, you're attacking the Catholic Church. I'm attacking non-truth. Call it what you want. Jesus said, verse 26, ought not Christ. I love that phrase, ought not Christ. If you read it, you'd know this. He's, it's like he's saying, you guys missed this. You didn't read it. The prophet said it. How do you read Isaiah 53? How do you miss it when you read Isaiah 53? He said, you had access. Ought not Christ, look at it. To have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, verse 27, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now remember, remember, they still don't know who he is. They're intrigued by what they're hearing. It says, verse 28, they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went. He made as though he would have gone further. Remember, they didn't know who he was. 
It says, but they constrained him, verse 29, saying, abide with us. For it's toward evening, the days far spent, he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, these are exact same words in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when he describes to us the Lord's Supper. The same night the Lord was betrayed, he took bread. You say, who is the other disciple here not mentioned? I don't think they're mentioned because you'd be distracted by it. Well, how come Peter got to be there? How come James got to be there? How come Philip got to be there? Whatever he's doing here, somebody caught on to. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Verse 31, their eyes were opened. Wait a minute. You mean eating bread opened their eyes? It was a trigger. Hey, remember he said at, at the Last Supper, this do in remembrance of me. Let not your heart be troubled. Their, their hearts were so troubled. They were so without peace. They were so distracted. It says, verse 31, and they knew him. Sense of humor, what's he do? He vanished. <laughs> but you know what? Based upon what he said, they don't need him. Look, look, look. They had what they needed. Say, are you saying we don't need Christ? I'm saying we don't need him right now. We have him, but we have his word. We talk about him. We talk to him. We're glad he's our savior. He sent the spirit of God. He's back in heaven. I'm not saying we don't need God. I'm saying we don't need Jesus here looking over our shoulder, walking with us everywhere we go because we have his word. Verse 32, what a great verse. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn? Did what burn? Our heart burn. They didn't say, man, were we intellectually stimulated. What did they say? Did not our heart burn? That's where you believe. That's where you serve. Not from your mind. He said, they said, did not our heart burn within us? Look, verse 32, while he talked with us. I have a question, and this is going to distract you. But I got to say it. When he's talking with them, were there wounds in his hands? How'd they miss that? Hey, did you ever miss him when he was right there? Remember what Jacob said? God was in this place and I knew it not. They said, did not our heart burn while he talked with us? By the way, and while he opened to us what? The scriptures. And they rose up the same hour. Now they're excited. Now, now life is worth living. They returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven gathered together. And them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. I need to pray, Lord, please help us. Please help us to get stirred and may our heart burn uh, uh, because we trust you. I don't want it to be, but we trust it. I want it to be, we trust you. I pray that will be true tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I relate to what they're feeling. I, I've been I've been disappointed. Have you? Someone has disappointed me. Something, some situation has disappointed me. I wanted God to do this. He didn't do it. I'm not talking about big stuff. I'm talking about, for the most part, daily living. Just want to make it through the day. You want to witness to this person and you want them to say yes, and they don't. Daily living can be hard enough. And now it seems like it's really hard because we're living in a world that hates him. Don't they? Like they hate him. They like Easter. They like the party. They just don't like the reason for the party. Let's party. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ was resurrected. Why was he resurrected? Because he died for your sins. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hey, like the guy that was brought through the hole in the roof. He couldn't walk, so they lower him through the roof. Why? Because he needed to be healed. What did Jesus do? First thing he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And all the uppity-up religious punks said, oh, hold on, wait a minute. We don't talk about sin here. Jesus said, all right, be healed then, man. But the most important thing was that he got his sins forgiven. That's why he came. Jesus didn't come to heal you. He came to forgive you of your sins. The disciples, Luke chapter 10, he gives them power. They go out. They heal diseases. They raise the dead. They cast out demons. Jesus said, how'd it go? How'd it go? How'd everybody? How? They said, man, we were, we were rebuking demons. They were coming out of people. We were healing the sick. We're so excited. And then he said, don't rejoice in that. Luke chapter 10 and verse 20, he said, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Do you rejoice in that? Well, but we trusted. But we trusted. They're emotional. They're sad. They want a Savior that does what they want him to do. And I think in verse 25 when he says that harsh, that's harsh. Oh, fools and slow of heart. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. I think he just is letting them know that they could have believed the right thing. He didn't say, well, you know, if you had it, you could have believed it. I guess you didn't have it, so you couldn't believe it. He said, man, you, had, you didn't believe it. And that's what, what we're supposed to do. But without faith, it's impossible to believe him. We're just supposed to believe him. We're not supposed to like it. We're not supposed to understand it. We're not supposed to get it. We're supposed to believe him. He said you have, listen, you have what you need to believe. But he calls him, he calls them fools. Would that get your attention? I mean, when he called them fools, did they know who it was? So you guys are acting like there is no God. You hope that they would stop and go, you know, it, we are. We're acting like there's no God. And then he calls them slow of heart. He says that they missed what was written. It was written. You could have read it. You didn't read it. If you did read it, you didn't understand it. You ever read the Bible and not understood it? It's not God's fault. It's our fault. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Well, I read it, I didn't get it. Let me say it again. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Yeah, but I've read it and I still don't get it. Let me help you one more time. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Let me help you one more time. Study to show thyself approved. Keep reading, keep reading. Say, God, help me. Three things. Number one, they had false hope. They had false hope. 
They're focusing on the circumstances. We do that. Well, maybe you don't. I do. They wanted evidence instead of faith. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves going through the motions of serving Christ, doing the right things, and doing them with no joy or enthusiasm. As he says to them, you're, you're just walking on in life. Verse 17. He said, I don't get this, that, that, that you're walking in or sad. It's like you're just going through life and you're not enjoying it. Don't you want, hey, talking to you, don't you want to enjoy life? Don't you want to enjoy the Lord? Don't you want to say, man, I just love the fact that God loves me. I, I want to believe him. I want him to bless me. Sometimes we find ourselves praying, and do we really expect God to answer? Do you? Well, I really want this. I didn't ask if you wanted it. I asked you, do you believe he can do it? Man, the Bible says we have to believe. It doesn't say ask right. Make sure you say the right words. Make sure you say, oh, heavenly father on high, mightiest God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jay. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about believing he can do it. When you address him, he'll know it. And you and I have to believe he can. Faith. I think so often we come to him and we just don't believe that. Look at them, verse 21. We trusted. They weren't sure. They're not sure. They're just trusting what they think they ought to trust. Can I ask you a personal question? Would you be honest with me? I want you to raise your hand. Would you be honest? Promise me. Be, it's, it's not going to get into your bank account. Or We just answer this question honestly. How many of you here by uplifted hand will say, there was a time in my life since I've been a Christian that I doubted my salvation? That's terrible. Does it change it if you doubt it? Did John the Baptist doubt that Jesus was the one that was supposed to come? Did it change the fact that Jesus was the one that was supposed to come? See, if you doubt, it doesn't hurt God, it hurts you. So what do you do when you doubt? You sit around and go, I, I need to figure this out. You Don't figure anything out. Run to him. God, I'm doubting. Would you please help me? Be sure about it. You've got to be sure. They thought they knew what Jesus would do. They said, verse 21, we thought he came to redeem Israel. It's a third day. Nothing's happened. They're disappointed in what they thought what he didn't do. You realize every time that we're disappointed, it's because we didn't get what we thought God owed us. God doesn't owe me anything. They had a false hope, number two. They had high hopes. Roman oppression. They're living under Roman rule. They were being gouged. You think you pay a lot of taxes. They were being gouged. Hey, Zacchaeus. And that was just one of them. Gouging the citizens out of their money. They were just looking for relief. They weren't looking for Christ. Boy, there's a big difference. You know, this whole thing of motive, it isn't so much what you do, it's why you do it. If I said to you, hey, did you pray today? Yeah, I prayed. Did you talk with God or what? did you just like give him your grocery list? With God, it's relationship. It's not fulfilling your, your wish list. Do you understand? Did you read your Bible today? Yeah, I read my Bible. And where I was, I really didn't understand it. Well, it, you think God made a mistake that he wrote this book that nobody can understand? No. You have to look for Christ when you read it. Jesus said, when you pray, God will answer so he gets glory. Maybe the, the answer you want isn't going to give him glory, so he's not going to do it. Imagine that. 
we focus on our circumstances so strongly. I know. Look, I, I know that verse 16 is there. But it scares me that you and I can lose the sense of the presence of God. He was there. Everything they needed. Everything they expected. Everything they trusted just called them fools. When he came along, wouldn't you say, wait a minute, who are you? How'd you know that? They never asked. They could have just said, well, well, wait, wait a minute. Who do you think you are? I mean, I would say that. Listen, pal. I mean, I may be dumb, but I'm not a fool. And I may be ugly, but I'm not a fool. I mean, wouldn't you challenge him? Not them. See, when we're going through something, it's all about us. And we've got these high hopes that aren't fulfilled. When they saw him take bread, something clicked. Hey, watch. When they saw him take bread and break it, that's what it says. See it? Verse 30, he took bread, blessed it, and break. When they saw him break that bread, something clicked. You know what he was showing them? I made a sacrifice for you. I came to earth to sacrifice myself for you. They were supposed to be preoccupied with him. Last thing, number, number three. Not only did they have false hopes, they had high hopes, but now they have heart hope. Think about this. Verse 15 makes it sound like they're trying to live for Christ by reasoning. Does it make any sense to you? Hey, does it make any sense to you that Jesus left heaven, came, died, suffered, paid for our sin, they buried him, he rose up from the dead? I mean, honestly, I know you're glad about it, but does that make any kind of logical sense? None. I mean, it makes more sense. Listen to me. It makes more sense that if I'm good... If I do my best, he lets me in heaven. Be honest. That makes more sense. That's why we talked about last week when he says, be careful of the simplicity that's in Christ. Man, I can remember smoking a cigarette, reading my Bible, going, I've been serving man. I've been sitting through the most boring church services in the world. I've been putting up with nuns. I, 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 I've, been, I've, been, man, I've been snookered. Because you're telling me? Just call on him and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you telling me that's all it takes? And I heard that for six months. It took me six months to come to grips with, with what I knew, but it just doesn't make any sense. And then it just kind of sunk into my heart. And I realized it's a heart thing. It's not a I get it thing. It's a heart thing. Are you saved? Yeah. How do you know it? Because I did what he said. 
You know, when you get to heaven, there's not going to be a quiz or a test. He's just going to ask you, why should I let you in? And you're going to say, because Jesus said, if I call on him and believe that he died for my sins, that I could get in. God's not going to go, wait, one more thing. What's your position on pneumatology? Do you understand? We don't get in because of intellect or reasoning. We get in because we believe in our heart. And then notice what happens. Once you believe, it does something to your heart. It makes your heart burn. I know, sometimes I'm awfully brash and bold, but I have a right to be, because I know I'm right. Well, you shouldn't be that confident. Then throw this book away. Here's what the book says. Say, well, you got to be careful about, about attacking other people's religion. That's why Jesus went to the cross. He didn't attack people. He attacked what they believed. Not attacking people. I was one of those people that believed that. And now I've got him in my heart, and, and now I want my heart. Listen to me. I want to know that my heart is on fire. Here's how you know if your heart is on fire. You listen to what he says. You do what he says. You'll want to tell others, verse 33. They couldn't wait to share the news with the others what they had gone through. We ought to be learning things about Christ that are so great, so exciting, that we want other people to hear about it. That's our heart burning. What happens to us? We get into this trap of just thinking about our own struggles. Man, I've got it rough. Man, life is hard. Our heart, listen, I want you to listen to this because I'm going to say this, I'm stopping. Our heart will only burn as we listen to Jesus as we read his word. If your heart isn't burning, that's why. You need to just embrace this book, get into this book, read this book, love this book, memorize this book. I mean, just eat when he told Jeremiah, eat this book. We need to eat this book so our heart will burn. If our hearts would burn, then we'll have an impact and effect on, on the people around us. We're walking around sad. They're, they're saying, you know, they do all their trash. They live like they want, talk like they want, do stupid stuff. I mean, it, you talk about fools. I'm really, I'm really a woman in a man's body. Shut up. That's foolish. You know what will affect them? A bunch of Christians whose heart burns. Telling people, hey, let me tell you the truth. So now they've got the goods on us. Watch. If we call them a name they don't like, we can go to jail. They worked this plan out perfectly. So if we call them, they can come in and look, it isn't long. I, I ain't scared. It, they're going to come in and go, you can't say people are sinners. Then we might as well close up. And they're going to do it. If you can't call a lady a lady, are you with me? If you can lose a job of a school superintendent in Massachusetts because you wrote a letter thanking you, those two ladies, we better get on fire before it's too late. Hey, say so there's just a few of us here. There's enough of us here. I'm sure all of us could affect someone. We better get on fire before it's too late. Heavenly Father, please, God, set us on fire. Set us on fire spiritually. I pray our hearts will burn. I pray that the Bible will just consume us to the point that our hearts burn. 
They said, did not our heart from while he talked with us. While he opened the scriptures. God, it's so easy. It's right there. I pray our hearts would burn for you. They're trying to shut us up and shut us down and shut us out. We need to stand up and say, hold on, wait a minute. Jesus is a Savior. He can save you from your wicked sin. What you're doing is wicked. What you're thinking is wicked. He can save you from that. He can give you peace like you've never had. He can get you on the way to heaven like you can't get there any other way. Let him be your Savior. God set our hearts on fire. Make our hearts burn. We want to have heart hope. To so many Christians, they have false hope. They think it should be this. They think it should be that. They don't say anything. They don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. Meanwhile, our world is going to hell. Literally. They're doing all they can to shut us up. And it's working. God, the only remedy I know for that is if our hearts burn. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. I'm assuming you're born again. If you're not born again, you need to get saved. But if if you're born again, you, you, you better know. You better know your heart's burning. If you don't know your heart's burning, you need to do something about it tonight. You need to make this. Let me give you the decision you need to make. Dear God, I want to read your word. I want to listen to your word, whether I'm hearing it read, whether it's being preached, or whether I'm all by myself reading. I want it to just make my heart burn. Please, God, I want your heart, your word to make my heart burn. Help me to remember that. Help me to desire that. Help me to want that more than anything else, that my heart would burn because I have your word. And I could read your word whenever I want, however I want, wherever I want, and it can make my heart burn. I want my heart to burn from your word. I want to see what it says. I want to listen to you. I want to do what you say. And I want my heart to burn. Make my heart burn. That's a decision you need to make tonight. Make sure you're going to heaven and make sure your heart burns. Lord Jesus, please, in this place tonight, set our hearts on fire. It's a song we sing, set my soul on fire. Tonight, God, set our heart on fire. I plead, I beg, because I ask it in Jesus' name. Piano's playing. You're standing. You need to just come and, and talk to God. Ask him, come on, as she plays, you're standing. Just say, God, my heart needs to burn. I want my heart to burn. I want my heart to burn, God. Make my heart burn. Quit complaining about all the problems and what you think and what you see. Just say, no, God, nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is that my heart burns. I want my heart to burn burn for you. I want my heart on fire for you. I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be slow of heart. I want my heart to come on, come on, come on. You talk to God. You mean it. You just come and you say, now God, this is what I need. I, I need, I need my heart, my world, my country, my city, my family needs my heart to burn. time. Don't stop reading the Bible until your heart burns. Say, well, man, I read and I got to go. Okay, well, pick it up whenever you can and read it and just say, God, I want my heart to burn. I want my heart to burn. I want to see it, God. I want to see it. I want to see it in your word. I want your I want your word. I want what I'm reading and, and I want my obedience to your word, what I see and read and hear. I want it to just set my heart on fire.
pray with me? Father, I don't want to miss your presence. We need your presence more than we need anything. Your presence because you're alive. Your power, your working power, your might. Because you're alive. These two, two people did not think you were alive. They certainly weren't acting like it. I pray that we'll live and act and believe like you're alive. May your word may we never think we know it like we should. Who would think we'd get proud about that? But we do. Help us just to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Help us to never be satisfied. Always begging, pleading, hoping, trusting that you'll set our heart on fire. For the sake, for the sake of humanity, If ever there seemed a time that the, the thoughts and imaginations of man's heart was only evil continually, it sure seems like that right now. If you want to take us out of here, take us out of here. But as long as we're here, Lord, I believe the only way we're going to help this world is if our heart is on fire. Help us to allow your words to make our heart burn. I'll bet these two wish they would have saw this sooner. He talked with us, by the way. Remember that? Man, our hearts burned when he did that. Something, something was special there. Remember that? When he, when he opened us the scriptures, remember our, our heart burned. Help us to be in your word, God, like we should. Believing it, obeying it, preaching it, telling it, sharing it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.